That's right. The Pirates are leaving Pittsburgh, moving to Montreal. They're going to be the Expos again. It's going to be real exciting. Look at this team. We got Tom Brady, Tim Lincecum coming back from his exodus. He didn't really, really retire, but he won three rings. So he'll definitely be a good piece to the rotation. Patrick Mahomes. Wow. I mean, he could have gone to the Chiefs and won a Super Bowl ring, but instead he decided to go to baseball. You know, I guess this is a simulation of if he won the Super Bowl and, and then he just gave up football. He's like, I accomplished everything I need to accomplish. So now he's going to try baseball as a pitcher, starting pitcher, which he did back in college. He's 24 now, so yeah, see what happens with him. Henry Rowan Gartner, wow. I mean, the kid's only, what, 12? It says that he's 18 on the on the uh, roster because we have to put him in 18 because it's not legal to have him be under 18. But he's only five foot five and 150 pounds. He won a title with the Cubs in the movie uh, Rookie of the Year. So I guess this is his comeback. Now he's now it's four years later after he won the title with the Cubs in 2016, and now he's back. As I guess he's like 16 now, maybe instead of 18. He got his buddy Chet Stedman from Rookie of the Year. His mentor. We got my boy David Wright here. Roy Hobbs from The Natural. Stan Ross from Mr. 3000. The two sports star, probably the best two sports star we've ever had in sports history, Bo Jackson. The Don Mattingly. Don Mattingly. Was never a Hall of Famer like David Wright. Looking for some redemption. Rick Vaughn from the movie uh, Major League. The closer. Flamethrower. Nomar Garcia Parra. One of my favorite players growing up. I uh, used to watch him in the minor leagues when he was with the Trenton Thunder. When the Trenton Thunder were actually under the Red Sox. Danny Ainge from the Boston Celtics and current GM of the Celtics. Also played baseball in his early days. Nuke Lelouch from the movie Bull Durham, the crazy uh, starting pitcher that threw it everywhere, including at the mascot. And of course, Ichiro, one of my favorite players. Bernie Williams, one of my favorite players that didn't make the Hall of Fame from the Yankees, from the core four. Actually, he was left out of the core four which is pretty sad because he was such an amazing player. We got one of my Road to the Show players, two-way star, Vincent Stahl. He's a starting pitcher, but he also has really great uh, hitting attributes. And he's, if you look at his quirks, um, he has elite running speed, deep scale, excels at steering bases, so be really interesting to see what he can do on the base pass and on the mound to be our two-way player. Josh Bell is just a hangover from the Pirates. Decided to keep him around anyway because he's a decent backup first baseman. Really Maze Hayes from Major League. Stalin Castro, one of my favorite second baseman. Adam Frazier, another hangover from the Pirates. Kenny Powers from Eastbound and Down. Chris Archer, he's a uh, he's in the minor leagues, but kind of a star that fell off. Used to be an ace, now he's in AAA. Decided to keep him anyway. You know, never know if he'll come back. I always liked him as a pitcher. Pat Nishik, one of the uh, old veterans. I figured I'd sign. He's got good experience. Over 11 years in the league. David Robertson, one of my favorite really pitchers. I ever pitched for the Yankees. Yasuo Puig, he's always a great free agent pickup. 
Jared Dyson, another holdover from the from the um, from the Pirates, but great base dealer, great fielder, great utility guy, sort of in the outfield. So why not keep him around? Kyler Murray, what a great player he is. Uh, currently playing for the Arizona Cardinals as a quarterback, but he did play baseball too in college, um, and he got drafted by the Oakland Athletics. But I figured I'd take him and see how he does in baseball, similar to Patrick Mahomes. Another veteran, really pitcher. I decided to sign up for a pickup. Same with Ben Zopras, <laughs> Michael Jordan. See if he can make the major leagues for real this time. Another veteran catcher I picked up, Jake Taylor, uh, the, the catcher from Major League, uh, turned into the manager later. Another veteran reliever. Another decent um, depth guy. We can just put in the roster, backup catcher. Brandon Rogers, a prospect from the uh, Rockies that I I really like, decided to pick him up. Mitch Keller, a uh, prospect from the Pirates, probably the number one prospect. Decided to get Bartolo Colon off the free agent pool. I mean, he's 45 years old. He's got one year left in the tank. Let's see what he can do. Amir Garrett, another guy, uh, reliever, kind of like a minor leaguer slash major leaguer, got a flamethrower of an arm, I mean, he'll probably be my closer for AAA. Deion Sanders, but the younger version of Deion Sanders when he was fast as lightning, uh, when he first started out with like the Yankees, see if he can make the majors or make an impact later in his career. These are just a bunch of uh, prospects that I decided to snag from other teams. Debbie Garcia is probably my favorite starting pitcher prospect from the Yankees. Fernando Rodney, he's on his last year, but he's a decent reliever. See if he can come up to the majors or if he'll stick around and help out the minor league club in the relief in the bullpen. Kevin Newman, another holdover from the Pirates. Cole Tucker, another minor league prospect holdover from the Pirates. Munoz, I forget which team I got him from, but if you look at his velocity, he's got a 99 velocity, so why not have that out of the bullpen? It definitely helped from the Padres. John Ryan Murphy used to be a prospect catcher from the Yankees that we traded away, and why not keep him around? He's already on the Pirates anyway as a backup catcher. Same with Jose Azuna, David Phelps, another favorite reliever of mine from the old days. Crash Davis. Crash Davis from uh, from Bull Durham, obviously with Nuke Lelouch. Here's a bunch of others, just random prospects that I decided to keep around for later. Once the uh, better players on my roster decide to hang it up. Jacoby Ellsbury, I always liked him, even though he was such a bust of a signing for the Yankees. You know, he only his rent, his contract only ran out last year, I believe. So I figured I'd give him another shot. He's a good player. Just keep him in the minors. Tim Tebow, another guy that I really love. Just keep him in the minors. He'll probably never make the majors, but not a bad guy to have around. Dante Fischett Jr., Dante Fischett's son, and Bo Bo Bichette's brother. Derek Holland used to be a great pitcher for the Rangers back in the early 2010s took him to the World Series a couple times and my lowest rated player is a 52 Tom Brady is only 22 in this uh, sim this is simulating that he didn't that he didn't uh, go to the Patriots and said he decided to play baseball which he did do he got drafted by the Washington Nationals or at the Montreal Espos at the time so pretty interesting that Tom Brady could have played baseball Roy Hobbs is already, or no, sorry, Stan Ross is already 45. He's on his last year, so see what he can do at first base. A lot of these guys are kind of older, like Danny Ainge, um, Pat Neshek, 39. Tim Linscombe's 36. So some of these guys are a little older. Chet Stedman, see what happens. Now 
Now, for all the other teams, I decided to give them. I decided to give them a. Uh, one legend on each team, so for the Orioles, they got Cal Ripken, Jr. The Red Sox got Ted Williams. Basically, I googled who's the best player from each... Who's the best overall player from each franchise in history, so... Took a lot of those players. The Yankees, they said... I forget who they said their best player was, but I decided to take put Derek Jeter on the team. He's not even the highest rated player, ironically, on his on the current Yankees. Tampa Bay Rays, Fred McGriff. Yeah, I know he played for a few seasons with them. Roberto Alenauer on the Blue Jays. Frank the Hurt Thomas on the White Sox. Bob Feller from the Indians, starting pitcher. I made all these legends 28 years old with seven years of major league service just to make everything even. Ty Cobb on the freaking Tigers. Wow. George Brett on the Royals. Kirby Puckett on the Twins. Nolan Ryan on the Angels. You can't do a sim. You can't do a franchise without Nolan Ryan. Ricky Henderson on the A's. Of course, Cren Giffey Jr. on the Mariners. Yvonne Rodriguez on the Ti on the Rangers. He did play for the Tigers and the Marlins. But he's known as a Ranger. Jeff Bagwell on the Astros. Hank Aaron on the Atlanta Braves, even though he played for the Milwaukee Braves. Gary Sheffield on the Miami Marlins. Played a lot of his early years there. I think he won a ring with them in 97. Andre Dawson for the Montreal Expos slash Washington Nationals. Mike Piazza over in the Mets. I know a lot of Mets fans are going to be uh, not too happy about putting Piazza over Tom Seaver, but I know a lot of the young fans, younger fans like myself, are way more familiar with Piazza, and I, I think they would take him over Seaver. And just he's an everyday player, so why not? They already got a lot of good starting pitchers on the team with Degrom and Syndergaard and Stroman, so why not just use Piazza? They needed a good catcher anyway. Mike Schmidt on the Phillies, of course. Sammy Sosa on the Cubs. Even though that's up for debate, I know Ernie Banks is really good. Uh, there's other legends too, but obviously I want to have like a home run chase with, um, I'd love, I'd love to have a home run chase between Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire and Ken Griffey Jr. Kind of like 1998. That'd be pretty nice to have. Pete Rose for the Reds, of course. Robin Yount for the Brewers. Mark McGuire, as I stated before, for the Cardinals. Randy Johnson for the Diamondbacks. I mean, he won three Cy Youngs with them. Todd Helton for the Colorado Rockies. Sandy Koufax for the Dodgers. Tony Gwynn for the Padres. And of course, Barry Bonds for the San Francisco Giants. Now let's advance with the season. I'm going to do uh, Universal DH. There's no reason to have pitchers hitting. To me, that's ridiculous, especially on this game. I'm going to keep budgets off. I mean, budgets on, sorry. Uh, Got to stay under the budget. This is the first of the new franchises or new fantasy leagues that I'm doing where I'm going to keep the, fr the franchise's budget under budget. And the other two fantasy leagues that I did... They were, my, my, uh, my team budget was like $300 million. My salary for the team was just way too much. So this year it's going to be a little bit of a challenge trying to keep everybody under budget. Everything else is going to be normal. I'm going to do everything in here except for scouting. Start off in the regular season.
Yeah, my budget's 509 a week. It's kind of low, but it's still underneath under budget. Tim Lincecum is being paid almost 30 million this year. You got Bernie Williams on a 15 million year contract. You can see the rest of the contracts here. I mean, you got a lot of great I got a lot of great bargains. I mean, considering I'm only paying Don Mattingly one and a half million a year. <laughs> and he's a 92 overall. Stan Ross is a 99 overall. He's only getting paid a million a year because he's 45, which is crazy. Chet Stedman's a 99. He's only getting paid 589 for one year. David Wright's only getting paid 583 for one season. He's freaking 99 overall. Nomar's 93 overall, only getting paid 508. Tom Brady's only getting paid 507 for one year because he hasn't played in the majors yet. Still got to prove himself. Danny Ainge, same, same, same deal. Roy Hobbs is getting paid 500K, 97 overall, 10-year contract. I'm pretty sure I'm going to trade him off, if, especially if he does well, or just release him. I don't know. We'll see what happens with him. Patrick Mahomes hasn't played in the majors yet. Got to prove himself. 99 overall, only getting paid 115k, which is really a great, a great bargain right there. Nuke is getting paid 62k as a fifth starter, 87 overall. Pony oh, Ron Gardner, wow, look at that contract, 30,000 a year. He's only 18 in the game, or on paper he's only 18, even though he's only 16. And getting paid 30,000 a year. I mean, for 10 years, that's not a bad deal, especially if it pans out. Pretty sure it's a 99 overall if it pan out. So here's my budget. Here's my goals for the GM, as a GM, to reach the postseason, win the league pennant. Let me set my sponsors just up. Got one guy on waivers. I don't know why he's on waivers. Wade, what? Wade Davis is on the waiver wire. Ben Zobris is my waiver guy. Hopefully nobody steals him. Update my trading block. Highly rated, so I'm not really too worried. Yeah, so scouting, all this is going to be. A lot of these guys in the free agent pool are, are just t pirates that I didn't want, so I just. Dumped him into the free agent pool. Hopefully they'll get picked up. Kind of feel bad that I just kicked him off the team, but you got to do what you got to do. It's a decent uh, free agents here. Let's see if the CPU picks him up. Prospects. Wow. Brady, Mahomes, Stahl, Murray, Bobby Bradley. He's a prospect that picked up. Xavier Edwards, Thomas, Garcia. We got a lot of prospects on this list. Batting is going to be set on veteran. As usual, from my franchises, pitching is all star. 
critical situations are on. Everything is manual except for scouting. Ah, see, he cannot be DH. That's crazy. You gotta have him in the field. He's way better. my lineup. I don't know about Evan Gaddis being the backup, but hey, you got Tom Brady. He's a rookie. He's young. He's going to be able to play like 160 games at least, so not really too worried about that. for now. My budget's a lot lower than the other two franchises. It's going to be really cool to try this out for the first game. Look at those uniforms, I just love it. All the legends and the that are hitters are basically all batting third, so anytime on the pitcher or anytime the guy the third guy in the lineup on the other team comes up, I know that's the legend. Basically that's what they did for all the at least the computer set that lineup that way. Pretty predictable. It's time for baseball on MLB Network. Opening day is here as we get the new season underway with a good matchup between the Expos and the Tampa Bay oh, Rays. The Expos. Nice. A whole lot of work went into the last offseason for this franchise with a new home and a new identity starting this year. Heidi Watney has more on the rebirth of this organization. Matt, it's been a hectic offseason for the front office and players alike as the franchise has finally made the move that's been in the works for some time now. There's plenty of excitement in their new city as fans have embraced their new hometown heroes. And you can feel the buzz all over town as fans look for sightings of the players out and about. With the off-season business concluded, though, it is time to settle in for the first season of this new chapter in franchise history. The games count starting now. Opening day on MLB Network, and it's coming up next. <laughs> Look how small he is. How come he got number three? He's supposed to be number one. I hate I hate how the show always messes that up. Like Hank Aaron on the Braves is number 45. I can't make him 44 because the, the number's already retired by him. It's kind of quirky. Oh well. 
just a little formality. Charlie Morton gets the call to pitch here on opening day in front of the hometown crowd. What's your take on him, Dan? We're looking at one of the top pitchers in the league right now. Solid win total from last year, and he'd like to win a whole bunch of games in this new season. Three, four, four, take your base. Coming to the plate now, Don Mattingly. And he could give his guys an early lead if he can come through here. Mattingly. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Outside target here, and he hits it for strike one. And there are the umpires assigned to this one. Calling balls and strikes is Mr. Mike Fillmore. Hey, you know, D Roll, Mike Fillmore, he'll give a little bit off the edges, but he gets the respect not only from the pitchers but from the players because his zone is consistent. Yeah, as long as he's consistent, Dan, I'm okay with Mike Fillmore's zone. If a pitcher's pounding that zone, he wants to give a little bit off the outer edge, I'm okay with that. Hit to short. Adama scoops it up, and the two-out threat will not come to pass as the inning is over. Henry Rowland is on the mound for the season opener on the road in this one. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? This guy has three pitches that he brings into his mix. And if he has all of them working, he has a chance to be really solid. A good pitcher, but he needs command of all three of his pitches. Play ball. Ball four, take your base. Stepping up to the plate, number 25. And they're runners at the corners now. Number 25. The payoff pitch. Now a swing and a bouncing ball for Castro at second. Fielded cleanly. On to first, and the Rays are kept off the scoreboard here as the side is retired. Rays strand a pair. Still no score. So striding in, Brandon Lau. Batting seven, the second baseman, second baseman. number eight. And plays it first. Plays it first. He's ready. Here's the 0-1. Not surprisingly, here this is on the ground to the right side, and that's the second out. What's the play ball? All right, we finally scored. Striding in once again, Don Mattingly, as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. First pitch coming, here it is. It might be. Nice. It could be. It's gone. A home run. A two run blast to straight away right field. First home run of the campaign for him as they have taken the lead. It's now three to two. No surprise with that swing of the bat. This guy is simply one of the best in the game right now. There's not too many guys that take a beautiful hack like that in the league. Fred McGriff. Leading off the inning, Fred Leading McGriff. Off, and Fred. they'll need him to get something the going here. Fred McGriff. Here go, guys. Let's go. The 1-1. One, one. Hit hard. And that's the He's first out. out.
Let's play ball. Now batting number 25. 0 for 1 number here in the 25. early going. Hey, you in. Get him yourself. The 3 2 pitch. Hit on, back on, up on. the middle. Scooped up. Throw on to first gets him, and the side is retired. Down in order go the Rays. They're down 3 to 2. Ready to take his hacks again. Don Mattingly as he'll right look now, to follow right up the two run homer he launched over Saturday the wall play. last time up. And hey, it was a breaking ball to boot. This guy's a pretty good off speed hitter. You could tell by that last at bat he wasn't fooled at all. He sat back, waited, got the breaking ball, and didn't miss it. Oh, and a fine play there as he ranges back to put this one away. Not an easy play by any means, and there are two gone. What's the play ball? Bottom of the inning now, and next will be the power hitting catcher, Mike Zanino. Things not looking very good so far in this one, but we're still in the middle innings. They're down by a couple of runs, and this would be the right place and the right time to get something going. The last thing they want to do, try to come from behind and win this one in the eighth or ninth inning. And good hustle to get over and tag him for the out. Play ball. Ow. Ball four, take your base. Three, three. Ball four, take your base. Situation here. Don Mattingly will stride in, but first we take you back to the third as you take another look here at his two run homer that had him rolling early on. He's ready now, the pitch. Nope, at the ball. Brady on second, Ross on at first with nobody out. Hit on the ground to third. Oh, Beautiful on. diving stop. One there. Oh, but he beats it out. So they avoid what could have been a costly double play there. Well, they dodged the bullet that time by avoiding the double play. That would have been pretty demoralizing to end the inning. Now they've at least still got runners on the corners. Digging in now, David Wright. Now batting. Let's go, kid. The third base. One time right here. David. Wow, they want me to steal the base? The 1-1 oh, home. Runners off for second. Count. Pitch misses low. Yeah, the out. throw down. He's Ball's out. there, and he is out. I don't know Good why they're throw. wanting to steal. I think no that sense. steal attempt was all about Don trying Madden to stay out of the inning throw. ending double play. But now there are two outs, so that makes getting that run home from third a lot more difficult. That's the risk you take. What's the play ball? Three. Three. Standing in, Kevin Kiermeyer, runner in scoring position with Sujan. Kevin Kiermeyer. Now the 0-1. Hit hard on the ground at first. Reined in. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. Danger averted following the two-out double. More baseball on MLB. Nice. Suzuki with the two run bomb. Nice. Ready once again, Fred McGriff. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. I can't time. believe Lone Gardner is still, still Here now out the 2 2. 115 pitches. The ground out to second. Gloved by Castro. And there are two away now. He's trying to get a complete game. Not a lot you can do with that. So coming to the plate, Don Mattingly. He's one for four for the game. John Mattingly. 
Here's the first pitch to him. Aye. Bases are empty here with two men out. One time, right now. Ah, uh, well played like discipline that, that time, and he's in the hole now, 0 and 2. With the way this guy's throwing on the mound, you cannot be chasing. You have to set your sights a little bit lower and control the strike zone. Hit on the ground toward the left. Come on, run it out, run it out. Throw in Keep time, going. and the side is retired. Finally brought in a reliever. Yeah, that's what you want to do when you're playing on the road. Take it right to the home squad and get a win. Now the pressure is off. If they get one of the next two, the series is theirs. Seven to two, the final score this afternoon. The Expos led this game from the third inning on and never wavered. Henry Rowland gets the win on the mound his first of the year as he turns in eight strong innings of work. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney down on the field, and the rest of our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. Thanks for watching MLB Network. Fans are final line score. First for the victorious visiting team. Wow, we won the other two games. Tim Lissigan won that. Vincent Stahl got the win in game two. Nice. We'd like to welcome those of you just tuning in on the show. You're joining us at a great time. Number three, still on the mound to start this ninth inning. He's got a shutout working to this point, so we'll see if he can finish this thing off. First offering on its way. And here's a fastball called for strike one. Hey, there's an old saying in baseball, you need to take a strike in this spot. Well, he got one there. Now he just needs to find a way to get on. Swing and a miss here, and he's behind in the count Nobody's now, 0 2. Out. Hey, he's been on point from the start of this game, just pounding the zone with a high 90s fastball. It almost looks like he's gotten stronger as the game's gone on. Into the corner and slicing foul. Tried to get him to go after one below the knees, but it's one and two. And he should be okay to go the distance here. He's just now about to hit 100 pitches for the ball game. Yeah, it's go time, Matty V. He's got a chance to close this one out. He knows the bullpen's rested and ready to go. He's got a smile on his face out there. Oh, and D-Row, this is what every manager loves. One day where you cannot have to empty out everybody in that bullpen. Going into Thanks the ninth right inning nice. in today's game with your starting pitcher, oh, you can't ask for more than he's given them up to this point. Here's Chris Bryant now. As he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. According to the career numbers on the back of his baseball card, Bryant carries a hitting line just over the 280 plateau. Fouled away. The 1 1. 
Back up the middle. Castro has it. Throw on to first gets him, and that means the Cubs are down to their final out now. Number 21, Sammy. Ready for another Sammy shot Sosa. now. Sammy Sosa. He's their last shot here with two away in the ninth as they look to avoid the shutout. Yeah, Matt, they just haven't had any answer for the great pitching so far in this one. First pitch coming. Here it is. The wind up and the 0 1. And this is swung on and missed. So with that, they find themselves down to their final strike here this afternoon. The Cubs are down to their final strike here. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that'll do it here as the ball game is over. Yeah, and we knew he was in a groove from the first inning, and he just kept this thing rolling and rolling and rolling. They couldn't get anything going against him. A dominant performance with a complete game shutout. A 7 nothing shutout final today. Montreal took the lead in the second inning and rode that until the very end. Henry Roland earns the win his second picking up 11 strikeouts along the way. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa. Dan please. Play ball. Three. Oh, that pitch against him. Oh man, I did the hit the wrong button. Oh well, I'll do it again. Maybe right. Why is he batting second? It's weird. He's batting 226 already. That's not a good start. At the plate, That's Pete third. Rose. First the chance for him here in the top Pete. of the first with nobody on. Whoa. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Nope, that's down. Dan Dero, we take a look at our home nine as they take the field here today. They dropped another one last time out, and in fact, they've won just twice in their last eight tries. Yeah, Maddie, you can't win when, when you're giving up that many runs. The pitcher was missing over the heart of the plate, not executing down and away, not brushing back anybody, making anyone feel uncomfortable. Guys were taking huge hacks off him. And to boot, the defense was on its heels. Two out, nobody on. 
in the dirt. It's 3-0 and now. Well, we'll see if he gets the green light here. You don't want to help guys early in the game, but at the same point, you want him swinging the bat in good hitters counts. Three balls and a strike to the Reds' left fielder. And this is taken low for ball four, oh, and they'll on, have man. themselves a two-out oh, base runner here after all. It's all a part of learning how to pitch in the big leagues. Major League hitters will not bail you out by swinging at pitches out of the zone, so he's going to have to continue to learn how to get guys out at this level. So we're runner at first here with two gone in the inning. And into the batter's box next, a guy who's developed into one of the big-time power hitters in the league, a Eugenio Suarez. And as it turns out, the two-out walk doesn't come around to haunt him as that ends the inning. Reds leave one. We'll go to the bottom of the first in a scoreless ball game. Anthony DiSclefani, a right-hander from the Garden State of New Jersey, gets the ball here. What's your take on him, Dan? Hey, you always like to begin the season on a good note. In his first start of the year, he did just that, picking up the win. There's nothing he'd like to do more than to get number two in this one here. Now batting, Suzuki. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. Pitch on the way. Way the 0 1 pitch. Ball, that's out. Hit hard up the middle. Nice. And that'll get on through into center field, so he's got himself a leadoff single. There's a hard hit ground ball. Pitcher not able to get a glove on it. Hard single up the middle. Yeah, watch your lips right there, Dan. Sent it back right where it came from. Into the box, Stan Ross, runner in scoring position with two from the belt, kicks and deals. Great baseball move. Not the best, obviously, but one of the funnier ones. One in the one. Time to take a look at the umpires in this one. Behind the plate is Mike Fillmore. Hey, D. Roll, Mike Fillmore, one of the most consistent umpires throughout the league. Both pitchers and position players love this game. Yeah, I think one of the best. It might nice. be. It could be. Over the wall? It's yes. It's gone. How a cool. Home run. I love this stadium, by the way. It doesn't seat that many people. I don't know it's 27,000, but it's definitely one of my favorite classic stadiums. That's how the manager drew it up right there. Hold the visiting team scoreless and then grab a huge home run in the first. Into the box now, Don Mattingly. As he will take strike one on the fastball here, no balls and a strike. And he's definitely off to a start in the early part of the season. Wow, nice. 
Where'd he go, no more? Let's see how Brady does. Digging in, Tom Brady. Now battle. The catcher. Tom Brady. First offering on its way. Hey. Bases are empty, one man out. And it's fouled away. Changed up on him as this is grounded a second. And there's out number two. Now back, the designated hitter. Dan. Swing it from the left side right here. And this is the side of the plate this guy loves to hit at. So hitting skinny. over 350 so left-handed, hitting against right-handed pitching. And a fastball close, but ultimately ruled a ball 1-0. You have to be careful. You can't sleep on the bunt right here, even with two outs. Bullet to second base. A fine play, and that ends the inning. Leading off the inning, Jesse Winker. Now in the box, Bo Jackson. Leading off for Montreal. The left fielder, Bo Jackson. Here's the pitch. Hey. Oh, and one. Oh, one pitch on its way. Ball one. If you're going to have success against some of the better hitters in the game, you've got to get that pitch right there. 0-2, oh, he's almost certainly out. 1-1, one, one, he's got a chance to really do some damage. Drill down the line. Ooh, wow. He's got it. Nice and there's yeah. one away. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Starlin Castro. See no more here. Digging in, Omar Garcia Parra. Now the pitch. Three to one our score as we play inning number five. Hit hard to third. Yes. And there's a base hit as that gets through into left. And they will hold that runner over at third as he'll move up only 90 feet. But the bases are loaded with one away. Come on, Tom. In now, Tom Brady. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. No hits to this point. The 1 0. Ground oh, ball set back on. up the middle, fielded by Mustakis. Really, Avado's in time at first, and it's a double play. Side retired. Just what the doctor ordered. He gets the double Still play looking. to get him out of the inning. Okay. We're back with more on a Sunday afternoon following this. Now with the play, Tucker Barnhart. He'll start things out in the sixth. Oh. 
Suzuki stands at third with one gun in the inning. Oh, he had him fooled there. No balls and two strikes. What I love right there is just the freedom in that hack. He ain't trying to do anything but hit the baseball as far as he can. Looking for the strikeout. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Ah, uh, yes. Liner the in there for a base hit. And they'll extend their lead even further as the runs in to score from third. It's six to one. And he's go, safe. Tom. Definitely an aggressive approach here down 0 and 2 in the count. Instead of shortening his swing and protecting the plate, he takes a big rip and is able to drive it deep for a couple of bases and an RBI. Michael Lorenzen takes the call from the pen as he'll try to get the final two outs of this seventh frame. Coming to the plate now, Don Mattingly. And he's got runners at the corners here with only one gun. He's set and the pitch. Swing, line, drive. That's going to be trouble. All right. This is a deep part of the outfield. Ross rounds the corner and is headed home. Nice. And he's safe at the plate. And they're pulling away. They lead by seven. Man, they're just piling it on now. That RBI now that triple makes it a seven-run lead. Did. It's hard enough to come back from a seven-run deficit in football. You can't score any touchdowns in this game. Three is today's final. Montreal jumped out to an early lead in the first and never looked back. Chet Stead. 